Okay, reporting in progress. Now we can officially start uh, the webinar. Max, I'll pass it on to you and thank you once again for joining us here today. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Paul, for this lovely introduction. I feel we uh, solved it so well that I'm now, uh, I'm going to struggle to find the additional strong points <laughs> about Box Hill. Uh, but uh, thank you for that, appreciate it. And uh, we uh, have been working with ESA Education for a really long time, so, so, so really happy to be here. So uh, welcome everyone, and uh, thank you all for joining us today for this uh, webinar. Now, before we start, uh, I would like to acknowledge that all our campuses are located on the ancestral lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations, and pay my respects to the traditional owners of the land uh, and the um, leaders uh, past, present, and emerging. Um, I'll try to start, um, I'll uh, uh, start with a short presentation, but I won't, I won't bore you to death with, with, with uh, slides. So, so I promise it, it's only a few slides. They're just uh, mostly yep. as talking points to get us started uh, with some general uh, introduction information. And then I'll move quite quick into our study course areas of specialization. And um, I'll also uh, try to do a, a bit of interactive kind of um, uh, exploration of our website, how to find the information, how to find our videos on YouTube, Perfect. these kind of things. So, so, so uh, very practical. And again, as Paul mentioned, uh, very happy to answer questions. Um, maybe pop them in the chat um, while I talk, unless uh, yeah, you really need the, need the answer straight away. Yeah, let's while you talk, we'll put it in the chat and then maybe towards the end, we can open up the mic. Uh, yeah, to people. yeah, that would be great. So, so thanks for that. And allow me to um, now share my screen uh, and we move on with share. How long have you been with Box Hill, Max? Oh, too long. <laughs> I think it's been almost seven years by now. I previously yeah, work long for, time. Yeah, I previously worked with Deakin University and uh, Fed Uni as well, yep. both in oh, Melbourne, okay. Australia. So it's been uh, it's been a great uh, great experience, and I'll refer to that when, when we talk about courses. Uh, now, uh, is is uh, are the slides showing up correctly? Yes, I can see. Yep. Perfect. No worries. Because um, every now and then I uh, end up showing the presenter view, <laughs> which is not great. Uh, okay, uh, so this is the agent uh, webinar for, for you guys. Um, as we mentioned, so moving along, yeah, great. Uh, uh, we are located in Australia, Victoria in Melbourne. We have three campuses in Melbourne. This is just one of them uh, kind of a uh, trip uh, down memory lane, uh, one of our agents visiting uh, visiting our campus. So, so we do quite a few of those. So if you're ever in Melbourne, you're more than welcome to come and see our uh, facilities. Um, in terms of the presentation, we will just move, um, like I said, um, try to highlight points of difference for, yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah just points of difference for, for Melbourne or TAFE in particular. I'll then show you the most popular courses and then briefly address um, admission requirements and have a look at scholarships because we do have uh, quite a few of those. Perfect. Um, so the way- Yeah, this I'm... is exactly what the agents want to see. <laughs> <laughs> scholarships, yeah, yeah. points of difference, key. Like, like I say, like I, I'm not a big <laughs> fan of like PowerPoints or so, so it will be just, just a quite brief and we can have a bit of a discussion or happy to, to answer questions. Now, uh, as Bo has mentioned, uh, Box Hill Institute is, a, um, let's call it a premier educational provider. We've been uh, established in 1924, which means next year we will be celebrating 100 years mm. uh, of being around. We are government um, registered and government funded organization. So that gives a lot of you know, stability and security and, and ensures that our facilities are really up to a high standard. Um, um, and our, all the courses are, accredited, our teachers are properly trained and we have a lot of equipment and uh, you know, quite a lot of funds to make sure these facilities, these, uh, these um, uh, classrooms are, are really uh, high standard. Now, um, I usually highlight four main things saying that our courses are really practical. So they focus on, on the actual skills every student needs to uh, obtain. Um, so we are really kind of um, delivering that training to up to industry standards. So, so you might see that our course is actually every couple of years, there's a new version of that course. 
uh, it is a little bit headache from from the Krikos perspective or, 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 or you know or all these kind of um, a official paperwork that we need to complete but it's really for the benefit of the student because they always study the, the latest the most up-to-date knowledge that is required for that particular career for that particular study area uh, we also offer a really personalized attention to students our teachers our lecturers our trainers will know the students by their first name they will be really approachable um, you know, you can ask questions, you can engage with them, you can ask them for, um, you know, tailored career advice or, or advice about your studies and which um, major, which, which study, um, um, study stream to choose. Um, and as an example, I'll use um, some of our specialized co courses um, that require, you know, we attract high profile uh, of applicants and they have very specific specific very uh, particular type of inquiries that uh, even if i'm asked some of these questions i might not be able to answer so we do not expect you as an agent as our council of representative to, to be able to answer some of those but what we can do with this type of specialized degrees to specialized applicants we can actually get them in touch with the faculty and arrange like a skype zoom session for 15 20 minutes when they speak to the head of the program uh, and and ask these questions and say is that course really for me will that so um, uh, will that be a good choice for me and like you know most of the times we would say yep that's a great a great choice we can definitely um that meets your requirement sometimes we might say well you're better off going to study you know classical music at the university of melbourne and such but it's really great engagement at that application stage which no university will offer you so, so because universities are so so structured and so so rigid in terms of approaching the faculty what we have here all our trainers uh, teachers instructors their main goal is to make sure that the course is is um, you know uh, suited to the students need and that we do our best to to kind of progress them in their career uh, and that um, uh, in a way ends up in work ready graduates so students are really, uh, and I realize that every single university or provider that you work with uh, will probably give you some high percentage and saying all the students within six months are employed. But from my, uh, you know, a good 15 years of experience of recruiting students for, for major universities and boxing institute, I, I would put, uh, you know, comparably the, the same grades, the same kind of uh, effort from, from particular graduate, I would, I choose a box hill graduate of a university graduate anytime simply because of that practical skill set um the experience industry industry they would already have done a uh, work placements um they have a lot of engagements with with um you know companies employees the skill set is much higher and they're much more confident than your typical university graduate university graduates typically are very theory based uh, and, and they don't know how to interact within the industry. So it's, so it's night and day uh, in, in, in my experience. Um, as Bob mentioned, uh, we will uh, share that slide deck with you. Um, so I've included links to uh, our YouTube channel. Of course, it's very simple to, to, to kind of look it up by uh, box, uh, putting Box and Institute into YouTube. Uh, however, I picked like specific videos for you so you can kind of have a look uh, and see examples of these industry standards how does uh, that apply to cybersecurity? how does that apply to early childhood educators you can have a look at our automotive facilities you can uh, hear the stories from our students because don't take it from me it's, it's uh, you know hearing that box is so amazing but you can hear it from the students uh, like what was their experience and how they benefited kind of from from studying with us so it's it's really a great resource uh, and very easy to share with, um, you know, with your audiences or, or use it as an example. Uh, in terms of our course offering, we have a range of qualifications starting from certificate free and, and going all the way up to bachelor degree. So uh, in terms of offshore markets, I would imagine that uh, mostly you would be recruiting or be interested in the bachelor degrees. And then that is of course related to, to certain trends or, or, or visa outcomes for uh, for higher education versus vocational um, only um, applications. However, we, we, we are um, kind of open or, or quite flexible with offering students vocational courses as well. So we have 
a commercial cookery or automotive courses that obviously are very popular. Um, so, so we can match them up with the degrees, but offshore applications are typically going for your um, kind of bachelor degrees. And just to make it a little bit easier for you, um, these uh, light blue highlighted areas would have bachelor degrees. So we would have a bachelor of commerce, <coughs> bachelor of hospitality management, and bachelor of information technology that I'll speak of um, uh, in a moment uh, a little bit more. Um, by security science, community services, early childhood, fashion, and music. So uh, we'll have a closer look at commerce, hospitality, IT, and community services, because that, that would be probably our top four across most of the markets. And based on what, what Bob briefed me on uh, before the session, um, that would be uh, probably your main uh, market share as well. So yes. commerce, hospitality, IT, and community services. Now, having said that, um, all, all that I will highlight about the specialized degrees with, um, especially with fashion or, or music or early childhood education is that uh, you probably won't see hundreds of those applicants, but it's worth an effort with every single applicant because they typically have a pretty uh, well matching profile and they are often very um, motivated uh, and they also have limited um, kind of uh, choice between providers. So they're literally looking at two or three providers maximum. Um, and to convert them, it's actually uh, much easier than convert your, your typical you know, accounting student. So, so in a way, it's worth an effort. Uh, it's a little bit easier because it's a good, good quality of applications. I have some success stories of mature age applicants from Sri Lanka or India applying for these specialized degrees and securing visas with no problem. So, so it really, because it matches so well, the story kind of uh, fits. So, so, so it's not, um, not much of an issue with, with a visa. Yeah. I, I will also link our full course list that will have, you know, the intakes and, and the pricing, but it's pretty much a stock standard. Um, February and intake, July intake. We, we, I, do have an option of a November intake, but that's subject to demand. So if you see for your markets uh, that there is uh, a significant interest, say, you know, some, some countries respond really well, say like with, with Nepal or India, uh, if we have uh, enough interest, we will run November intake for you. Um, so it's kind of uh, an option that we keep in mind. So, so um, at this stage, we're seeing how many um, kind of offers mm -hmm. we can convert for July and see what's happening with S1 uh, yeah. for next year. But it's basically... Um, uh, basically from, from this perspective. Uh, now, uh, if that doesn't uh, break it up too much, uh, I'll stop sharing. We'll pop, have a quick look at, at uh, our website and we'll come back. Hope, hopefully yeah, for great. So I'll just get out of that. And then share again for our... So no, no, a possible November intake could be something like cookery? <clears throat> I, I typically in the past, so, so uh, because we've been doing that before the pandemic and that would be your uh, Bachelor of Commerce, Bachelor of Hospitality, Bachelor of IT. More, more bachelor level, yeah. Yeah, because they have significant uh, cohorts and also for vocational yeah. study, it, it's very um, rigid or strict in terms of start yes. dates. So unfortunately, right, right, it right. would be either so early. certain diplomas will, uh, probably not, uh, couldn't do the yeah, that. Would be, uh, yeah, that would be yeah. hard. That's right, Bob. Got it. And so thanks for, thanks for clarifying that for me. I, okay, I, am I... On yes, I can, can see website. the website. Perfect. Yeah, yeah no worries. So nice Bloody and easy areas. to, to, to uh, Google up. Uh, and the way I show it is uh, basically to click that. Yeah, click the glass. search button, the glass. Yep, that, yeah. That's right. Let's have a look at. Um, so if we want to look at aged care or something. Yeah, no, no worries. I, I, I try to. Hospitality. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, hospitality management. So you see like yeah. it, it pops up quite nicely in terms of Bachelor of Hospitality mm. Management. Uh, you will typically have two options because Box Hill Services, uh, domestic and international students as well. So, so we actually have like 40 plus thousand uh, Australian students. Mm. 
but I'll show you. Uh, so international courses are marked with that nice little glow, but I'll show you what happens if you go to the wrong one. So that leads you to a domestic. In the top right corner, you can see right, these courses right. for domestic students. So that's how you can tell that there's something kind of off. Mm. <laughs> um, so you so you can uh, so you can click uh, back and if it says this course is for international students you're in the right spot, and then they'll see the Krykos number as well. Yeah, that's right. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, and uh, each and every course will have a very similar layout. So you will go through the same process. So search class, put in the uh, the name of the degree, click on that, and make sure it's um, containing information for international students, and then we can uh, start scrolling down to see. Uh, to see more uh, information that we, we might need. This brief introduction about the course. Um, and now we'll have very similar layout on your uh, left-hand side. Uh, it will have different options. Uh, so it starts by default with intake date. So major courses will have intakes in February and July. It talks about duration. Um, it has an option for a career outcomes. So, so at least kind of, um, uh, position the uh, roles uh, that you might hold after graduating with that degree. So, you know, function manager, account manager, sales and marketing. Uh, so for hospitality, it's kind of uh, nice and uh, nice and clear. Entry requirement. So most of our degrees, if it's not specialized, it will simply say um, completion of year 12 or equivalent. Uh, it will also um, show you the uh, English language requirement. So um, the main um, kind of most popular test is IELTS. So it will refer to IELTS. But if you wanted to see other tests, so such as TOEFL, PEARS, and so and such, you can just click a link and it will take you to a page that just compares them and gives you a table. So, so that's nice mm. and easy. Uh, applying uh, uh, again, uh, we are. Uh, vast majority of the markets, we do not accept direct applications from offshore. We always refer students to a, our agent network. So trying yeah. to support you and, and, and just be, because we recognize your, your expertise and, and that professional services to help with the visas. Um, and so that kind of describes how that works. Um, information about the fees. So um, estimated annual tuition fee for a bachelor is at about $18,000. So as you can see, it's very competitive, very attractive fees. It's Great you know, price. 50% of university. Well, you know, I, I feel it's much better deal uh, for the quality that you're getting. Uh, and now the, the, the option that I'm using probably the most or that I would really uh, like to uh, highlight with you because it's uh, super useful and I've been using it over the years, mm -hmm. speaking with counselors or students or parents. Uh, because it walks you through or walks the student through the actual content, the structure of the degree. Um, and that really helps uh, with the students that are not quite sure or, or what will I be studying, what kind of subjects and what's the assessment like. So this is the source that gives you that information. So you can open up your laptop and say, hey, let's have a look, you know, for, for Bachelor of Hospitality Management, it's, it's a management degree. The first year will be pretty much business a common subject. So accounting, business communications, marketing, these are all kind of like your stock standard um, subjects. You can open it up like one by one. When it talks a little bit more about the subjects, uh, it will say at the bottom, I realize this is quite small, but it says uh, what the assessment is like. It says, well, it will be individual report that you have to write, and that will be worth 20% of your marks. Mm -hmm. And you will do a group report for 40% of your marks, and there will be a group assessment as well. So probably some kind of a project for 40%. So, so it really kind of yeah. um, gives you an idea of what it will look like. And then we see in the second year in hospitality management, we start uh, getting these specialized um, subjects. So in industry studies, um, contemporary HR management for the hospitality industry specifically, accommodation management, F&B management, you know, um, again, recognizing that Asia Pacific is really uh, critical and of strategic importance to, to Australian government and the education industry in, in particular, we have a perspective on Asia and Pacific culture and business as a subject. Uh, mm, and then fantastic. in the, yeah, okay. it, it's really, it's really tailored to the industry, what, what's required, yield and revenue. So how, how do you make money, which 
which product or service is actually bringing you uh, your revenue, uh, event management, project management. Um, so the last thing I wanted to touch on here is I, pretty much all our degrees will include um, guaranteed mandatory uh, work placements, also kind of work mm -hmm. experience or internship, if you wish. So for hospitality management, uh, again, it's uh, described as a capstone subject. Um, so students will be placed, um, uh, you know, in Melbourne, it could be one of the main hotels. If they're interested in, uh, say, tourism side of things, they probably will be engaged with uh, the front desk. If they on the um, F&B side, they will be working with, with that department, but it's really structured high quality training that has excellent kind of outcomes. And we had many graduates or, or we have lots of testimonials when, uh, when it's really proven to, to work really well. Um, so that's, so that's only that's, available in the final year, right? The work that's, that's Yeah, that's right. Because that, that would be uh, at least then we have, uh, you know, the, the, the best prepared student in a way. Yes. Uh, but what I like about it is like, you know, at the university, uh, most of the time it's, you know, you finish your degree and you might be pushed to, to do some internship, but it's typically external. It's quite theoretical. So you end up doing, you know, uh, back in the day, you know, data entry tasks or, or fetching coffees and, and, and things like that. It's not really uh, that great. While, while here it's really focused on the skill set, on, on, on the requirements. So, so you can actually fail. Your, your internship in a way, because it's your subject, you have to pass it. It's not just a tick box, uh, a tick box to, 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 um, uh, to uh, kind of quickly forget about. It's, it's a really intensive uh, kind mm -hmm. of internship. As an example for fashion degrees, uh, that internship is actually stretched out across, I believe it's five or six weeks uh, because students engage with, with, with that fashion company, say for a couple of days a week. So they work more project-based to give them exposure over a longer time and say, okay, we're working on this project. We're engaging with this media agency. We're going to see a client, you know, so it's really nice kind of journey to show the students how, how the industry operates and how these companies work. So it's not just, you know, two weeks, Monday to Friday, come in, sign off. And, and, and the next one, it's really great um, and great opportunities. So I quickly jump, I will just do it very briefly on the IT degree. I, so what I wanted to highlight with IT is that it has a really great majors. So it has four majors, cybersecurity, then we have AI and data analytics, uh, cloud computing and software engineering. I uh, now uh, also all our degrees uh, were relevant. They would have a required accreditation. So, you know, the, the IT degree will have ACS accreditation. Um, the commerce degree will have um, CPA and chartered accounts accreditation. Community services will have relevant agency accreditations and so on and so on. So if that's, and that's particularly important if uh, for later for skills assessment and, and, and such. So. Mm really great resource uh, you can quickly jump check the fees and say hey it's below twenty thousand dollars so it's still a great price what's the entry requirement it's year 12 but hey it talks about mathematics obviously for it it's, it's quite important so you will see these specific requirements there uh, and you can go through uh, your details because again with it students they will be asking more specific questions they will say hey do, will i work on networking or what's what's there uh, so, so that's really useful to have yeah. that uh, to be able to show it to them. And, you, you know, sometimes I had students think, no, nah, that's not what I want. I want, you know, computer science. And they say, well, you don't have the subjects that I offer. So, so that would help us to kind of uh, address it straight away and, and, and move on and decide, okay, this student probably, uh, you might then uh, either try to uh, offer another course or, or move to another provider and just move on to another student that will have a higher chance of, of conversion. But have you got an example of what a timetable uh, might might look like? Uh, so is it, would, say for four subjects per semester, would you be going to campus four to five times a week? Monday yeah, to I, yeah, I would say that for most of these degrees, uh, like, you know, with hospitality, it probably would be a bit more condensed. So you can probably get away with, with say, three days, uh, three and a half days on campus. But 
Yeah, I, the, the rest of it, it would be, I, I would just expect like, you know, um, probably a day off in a week, but would be Monday to Friday uh, yeah. because they are quite, quite uh, <clears throat> intense. There's a lot of things to cover, but mm -hmm. again, be, because they're so practical, it's actually fun to be on campus. And because you have access to equipment mm -hmm. and the service, it's, uh, it's really not sitting in a boring um, mm -hmm. classroom and just listening to a lecture and then the lecture disappears and you don't have a uh, chance to ask questions. It's, it's super interactive. So yeah. uh, I'll pop back in into the presentation um, and uh, we'll just cover a couple of things about scholarships and then we can get back. Is On, on the website, is there a function where uh, an agent could see uh, how to what courses could be packaged, for example, if they're looking for something to go from cert to diploma all the way to bachelor. I uh, good question. I uh, at the moment we, we don't have that uh, simply because we uh, our vocational offering has um, uh, has been uh, reduced a little bit uh, mm -hmm. because of the pandemic and such. So we're rebuilding yep. that. Uh, but happy to package uh, because we have com your classic commercial cookery package, yep. set three, set four, and a diploma, which is two years as a package. Yes. And we can link it up into Bachelor of Hospitality Management, which then becomes two years plus two. So two plus two, four. yeah. yeah. Four, two. Uh, another, another popular way, uh, especially on shore with automotive, is, is just because some students uh, prefer to stay on a higher education visa. Mm. Is uh, we are also open to package, uh, you know, automotive with a bachelor of commerce, you know, so the yeah. students can can obtain set three, set four, and the diploma two years of automotive plus the bachelor of commerce. However, right, of course, right. like won't be able to offer credits into bachelor of commerce. It's yes, more your stuff. So it's well two plus three then. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But they it's an option, yeah. and, and, and been working quite well because initially we have we had some minor concerns, but they, uh, you know from visa perspective, but it works quite that's, that's well, good. actually. Yeah. How about for uh, community services? Any particular package that works quite well? I, I, again, I, that's the, uh, used to have a diploma, but again, yep. uh, during the pandemic, it was kind of dropped off. There, there, there were yep. also significant changes to those type of courses in terms of um, study hours and, and such. So it was just a little bit uh, challenging mm -hmm. to tough. set up that di diploma. To, so it works for CRICUS registration, but Got we it. are Got looking it. at that because I understand uh, very well that the market for both early childhood and community services in terms of mm -hmm. location okay. is really big. Um, okay, so let me try to get back to the press. Uh, yep. So uh, we back. So that's the that's the website. So I'm just showing you that that it's quite useful to use with a student, or if you need it uh, quickly to refer the info uh, to the information. But again, if you get stuck or it's confusing or, or you know you feel like you need some help, uh, please contact our team. Uh, you know, if it's already at the application office stage, then my admission team would be happy to help. If it's just an inquiry, then I'll have my uh, recruitment team uh, reach out to you, and you can contact me on WhatsApp as well. Uh, so that's 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 easy um, as well. Now, uh, in terms of scholarships, I, we I still have funds uh, under Pathway to Victoria Scholarship. So that's a scholarship made by uh, um, possible by funding from Victorian government. Uh, the value of this scholarship is two and a half thousand uh, Australian dollars per student. Um, and it's uh, available pretty much. We just recently secured an extension until the end of this year. So yep. that would be read, readily available to any, say, onshore or, or current students that you feel you can still fit in for July intake because we're actually taking students until late July. I, mm -hmm. Or uh, students for, you know, if we're in November. And also uh, we could cover students for semester one next year, simply because the scholarship is uh, allocated at the time of acceptance or issuing of the COE. Exactly. So yep. we can secure so it. Accepting accepting offer before the 31st of December this year. That's right, that's right. Yeah. So, so we can secure it. And, 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 and the great thing about it is, which I love, you don't have to apply or be considered or whichever, it's basically automatically considered when you put the application in. And if we find the student is, um, you know, I, I matches that requirement, we will put it as a condition on the offer letter saying you might be eligible for these scholarships if you accept. 
And then if the student accepts the offer and we issue in a COE, you also get a, an additional PDF a kind of letter signed by the director international saying, you know, student, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, this name for this particular course, if you come and commence in, in this intake, you will receive that two and a half thousand dollars scholarship. So you, so you get it confirmed, you can show it to the student. Uh, I will have a link for you to details about these scholarships. Again, if you read about it, it sounds a bit, bit complicated, but again, it's, it's actually quite, quite simple. So it's a great option to, to mention to the students because if you're only paying or, or if the student is ex expected to pay, um, um, you know, that 18,000 for uh, per, per year in tuition fees, the, the deposit for uh, offshore applications would be semester fees. So meaning about $9,000. Uh, and, and you can mention to the student saying, well, you accept this offer, you paid the $9,000 deposit, but when you come and enroll to school, uh, you will have $2,500 later deducted from your exactly. semester fees. So, so yeah. uh, you know, free money, basically. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so that's really good. I, now, I, that, that, that's obvious, but just um, reminding everyone, there's no application fee for lodgement uh, uh, for our registered agents. Uh, so uh, if you go through Yes Education, that will be uh, nice and easy for us. Uh, we uh, are aiming, because I'm uh, expanding my team, so, so we actually have uh, changed uh, kind of the operations or, or recruited more staff. So uh, we have 24, 48 hours application processing time. So if that's an option application, then uh, we can get it done for you in a day. For offshore, it's typically 48 hours uh, with a small disclaimer. So my, my, my team doesn't, uh, doesn't blame me later on. I, of course, if it's a really busy time, like just now before the, before the intake, yep. it might take a little bit longer, but we really do our best. So, so if you put any application with us and you haven't heard from us in three days time, by all means, give me a call and say, hey, what's happening? Because it's just not, not, not the standard uh, occurrence because sometimes uh, many agents so polite and and uh, you know uh, cautious that uh, sometimes I have agents saying uh, you know oh we send you an application two weeks ago what's happening uh, and the thing is like for for whichever reason the application didn't go through or ended up with spam or also one of those technical issues and have I known about it straight away I I would have fixed it um, but um, because some sometimes um, um, it just um, um, yeah, people uh, very polite and, and, and wait. If you don't hear from us in three days' time, just just please follow up. Uh, we're still open, still open for July. Uh, again, any questions you can contact uh, contact our um, uh, team, and we're happy to help. I uh, and basically, yeah, that's that's the end of that. Um, let's say um, formal part of of uh, what I just wanted to to uh, present or highlight to you, but we're more than happy to chat about particular degrees or particular applications or particular regions or admission requirements. Now, one reason I didn't put slides per, per country and talk about GPA requirements. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, for too complicated with our big network. Uh, yes, so, so, yeah, so that's one and two, it changes uh, uh, quite often. So, so because we see these yes. trends, visa trends say for, Nepal, if you look at Nepal exactly two years ago, uh, early in March or, or April, you would say, hey, let's all apply for diplomas because you can get visa <laughs> grants for, for diplomas, right? And then it changes. And then, and then so, so we also adjust our requirements, but I would just use, um, uh, if I may, just like a general guideline for us, the most important part is that the student completed uh, year 11 or year 12. So year 11 for these vocational courses and year 12 for the bachelor degrees. Uh, and then, uh, then only then we'll look at, uh, and of course the English uh, requirement, but only then we'll look at the, the, the grades or degrees because for many countries, we actually don't, as long as there's no major fails in year 12, uh, we are quite flexible with the results. And I understand that, you know, Australian universities are also kind of slightly lowering the lowering. requirement. It's a race to the bottom. Yeah, but, but, but for us, because, <laughs> TAFE has always been vocational. So for us, what's important is that the student, you know, completed year 12, meets the English requirement, or if they need some uh, ELICOS, we can uh, we can arrange that. Uh, but else than that, we're happy to work with them because we realize that once the student comes in, we have that personalized attention. It's really practical. We will basically show them how it's done. Mm -hmm. So they won't be in the classroom without support and, and yeah. struggling and all of that. So, so our success rate in, in that kind of student support is, is uh, pretty high. Yeah. 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 
So I guess I guess today, I yes, there's a lot of stress on promoting the the bachelor uh, programs offshore, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in our in our markets uh, in Vietnam, uh, Thailand, Philippines, Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, I guess yeah, we we really want to stress that Fox Hill has you know a, a lot of bachelor courses actually. When some people might think an institute or a TAFE might only have certificate and and diploma. Yeah, that's that's right, and that's one of the reasons I was excited to join TAFE, uh, Box Hill Institute in particular. Is uh, I was asked to, to to help Box Hill with offshore recruitment because I've done quite a bit in Southeast Asia with under Fed Uni, and I was quite keen to get back. And and Vietnam, one of uh, one of my favorite uh, uh, countries and regions as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where we started, and we actually built like quite quite a good reputation. And having these bachelor degrees and that higher education courses. Yeah. at uh, pretty much half the price of the university while still mm-hmm. maintaining that quality, that government, you know, um, processes and security really allowed us to, 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 uh, 2019 was our record year. We were actually mm-hmm. growing so, so fast. The rest of the TAFE industry struggled a little bit uh, and we were the only one growing uh, at the time. So, so it's only just kind of like pandemic and, 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 yes. the, and the effects of it that, that took us a little bit uh, longer to get back. Now, uh, allow me just to quickly uh, yes, pick let's up go through uh, the questions. Uh, yeah, a uh, questions or two. Um, no worries. Uh, so thank you, Trin. I of currently, uh, no, we uh, cannot accept students under 18 years of age. Uh, but an option for you there to, to, to consider is we have uh, a pathway with Houghton uh, Melbourne, so the uh, English language uh, training provider that accept, uh, accepts uh, under 18 students. So if it's only uh, kind of like a short duration there, uh, then I would just uh, put for your consideration, uh, you know, maybe like a, depending on the English level of the applicant, uh, doing some English with Houghton. Uh, or even if the English level is, is high, then I would say, uh, you know, try EAP for 10 weeks and then join us. And if that matches, then we can package that with Houghton Melbourne, no problem, because they do accept under 18. i wondering, could you interest us apply community service? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, so we have Bachelor of Community Services and uh, that takes uh, three years to complete and yeah, open to international students. I, I, I would uh, su- suggest if, if you can try to look up on the website um, that uh, the link for that course, um, yeah. and that would give you more information. But uh, basically, it's year 12. And, uh, the main additional requirement is that the, uh, our admission team will ask the student to fill, fill in like a short questionnaire, asking some questions. We pass the questionnaire to the faculty. Faculty arranges a, a Skype or Zoom interview with the student. So interview is a formal requirement, but yeah. you will have a bit of a, a heads up. Uh, yes. It typically takes about a week. So, so you get a conditional offer letter and the admission will ask, well, will the student be available next Wednesday or Thursday? So it basically works this way. And if ha- the faculty is happy, uh, then we'll proceed further. If faculty has concerns, that will be explained to the student and we'll also share that with you. Um, uh, as soon as we have the outcome of the interview. Yeah. Uh, internal English test. Uh, Lara, yes, I, uh, we are using TIS and Vesan test, which is an online based uh, English test. So, um, yeah, happy to arrange that if you have an applicant that would require that. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, David, oh, great. If, if, yeah, if you have a student that applies uh, to any course at Box Hill and they don't have uh, English, uh, yeah, just just let us know. So again, we do the conditional offer, and then we could arrange the uh, the test. Yep, yeah, no worries. I, I have a question from Grace. Uh, just to follow up on a COE request. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I would probably uh, suggest uh, or recommend a uh, uh, simply send an email uh, to a uh, international application, so your admissions email, and say, hey, can can I get an update on this particular? Uh, COE, um, so quoting a name or opportunity need number, yep, yeah, that's exactly what we need. I'll try to take it down for you, uh, but I had a look at 
uh, admission inbox just maybe an hour ago and it, it's looking pretty uh, healthy so uh, yep. there shouldn't be any, <laughs> any any delay or, or anything as such but it's really good to follow up so so you can either forward that email again or just shoot the short email saying can i get an update on this because i need it urgently but pretty sure we can do it for you to, uh, by tomorrow no problem thanks that's good uh, if the student needs to study eap which institute do you recommend um I, we are working on bringing, so we used to uh, offer ELICOS programs at Boxing Institute. Uh, so we're working on bringing it back. Uh, however, if that's an immediate need, then uh, the providers that we currently work with is um, Auton Melbourne uh, yep. and Discover English. Yep. Uh, so, so these are readily available. You could start you know, next week, no problem. Uh, and we're happy to package with them again, no problem. So that would be quite, quite easy to, to do for us. Uh, but if that's something that we're planning for later on, say, uh, you know, start later in the year or ne next year, then um, we could try to set it up. Again, I can't, can't, can't really confirm at this stage because we're just working on bringing the program back. But we do have crackers for ELICOS programs. So, 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 so we're hoping to bring them back because obviously we realize they're quite important for, for certain markets, including Vietnam. Uh, do we have a age limit for applicants that keep apply for vet courses? I, okay, so, so there's no age limit as such. So as, as I mentioned earlier on, I, I had uh, some successful visa grants, successful applicants in really mature age from offshore markets that you traditionally uh, might uh, consider as higher risk in terms of visa grant rates. Uh, however, for vocational courses, uh, again, it really depends on, on, on the situation because of course, if we have applicant from, from a region when uh, where the visa grant for vocational stream of student visa is at 45%, uh, then uh, and the applicant is 35 years old, that means that would be uh, you know a risk factor, right? We would probably agree on that. But if the applicant is in Australia, um, and already completed some other study and wants to apply for vet course and it's of mature age, that wouldn't be a risk. So, so it depends on the individual situation. I'm happy to look at the particular case. If you're happy to share that with us, you can uh, you, you, you can email uh, email me or, or Yes Education and we can have a closer look at it, no problem. Mm. Is it possible to achieve high scholarships? Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, of course, it's uh, always possible. And uh, Australia has a lot of scholarships. So you can just Google up you know, Australia scholarships uh, because they would not be provider specific, uh, but the way I present it to parents or, or, or students or counselors, um, uh, especially uh, back a few, uh, few years ago when I did not have scholarships, I was just comparing that, well, the cost of our tuition fees is, you know, less than half of comparable university degree, while the degree is, you know, yeah. of, of just as good quality, plus you have that practical mm -hmm. work experience and everything else. Exactly. So in a way that, that that is already kind of priced in, I feel. And again, because we are government providers, so it's actually government funding us. Uh, so, so, so they fund the equipment, they find the uh, facilities. However, it's not often that they uh, give us a kind of like a higher scholarships. So, so that's why it, it's a good opportunity to try to, uh, you know, market is picking up. Uh, try to act on on any applications you might have for for this intake or for um, for semester one next year to benefit from that pathway um, to Victoria scholarship program because that's that's a very easy one uh, as long as you meet the requirements for the course and you accept it you basically get that two and a half thousand dollars scholarship so yeah I think that's that's even really good just to, you know to get the two thousand five hundred Victoria scholarship is is pretty good. Yeah. Guys, I think uh, yeah, given given the price hmm. point uh, and the quality on offer, um, yeah. Yeah, and definitely. you don't have to actually you, you don't have to apply, but <laughs> yeah, you don't automatic. have to apply. Yeah. <laughs> it's automatic, exactly. So yeah. I think uh, you might as well get the yeah, the application in to, to Box Hill. That's it. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it's a, a re really good offer that they that they give there. It's yeah, really nice. Uh, I think there's a few more questions, yeah? Yeah, that's great. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy to, to see uh, see you guys. Uh, cookery course, do you offer paid job uh, placement? Uh, uh, we have job placements, but they typically not paid. So it's slightly different to, to, uh, to domestic. 
Uh, but uh, commercial cookery, what's good about this course is that and the timetable is set up, is set up in these ways uh, that uh, students are typically on campus Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. There might be some theoretical class on Thursday, but the weekend is free because that's when students work uh, part-time. So it's really convenient in a way that you do your study in the first part of the week and you can do your part-time job. And a lot of these students uh, who, uh, some of them already had uh, some hospitality experience from, from overseas, uh, they already work in hospitality industry and because we have a skills shortage in, in Melbourne or in Australia for uh, for commercial cookery, uh, these jobs are, are actually quite well paid at the moment. So, so it's a nice kind of combination. Um, is the vacancy limited for the community due to proper, how long this thing should apply? Uh, Trinity, if I could trouble you to clarify, uh, what do you mean uh, by vacancy? Uh, I think, uh, I think she. I think Trinity means. Uh, will the course be full? Uh, let, let's oh, say okay. even before the uh, before the enrollment um, begins, like because it's uh, very popular. Um, will they have yep. how far in advance would they have to apply just to secure uh, an offer or a placement at, at least just for the course? No worries. Yeah, uh, it's a great question. So. Uh, I would say the, 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 the only or the main course that we have uh, uh, quite limited places would be Diploma of Nursing. So for nursing, I, I, I would literally have a handful of places per intake uh, because it fills up quite fast and it's quite competitive and, uh, and, and so on. So Diploma of Nursing is the only one when you would have that um, consideration. So typically if we have applications for that course, we convert them really quick. We get back to you and say, hey, here's your offer, but you really need to accept as soon as you can because otherwise the place will eat first in, first serve. In terms of Bachelor of Community Services, we don't, don't really have that problem. So, so we never had uh, an issue with, with uh, having available places for that bachelor degree. Uh, so the only thing that I would highlight is that degree, because uh, the intake is in July, but it starts very early. It starts on the 1st of July. It's the only course that we have starting that early. And it's also a very, uh, not very flexible course for a uh, late enrollment, simply, uh, simply because on originally on first day and the second day, there's already very uh, important mandatory training. And if you miss that, then the faculty will not let the student in. So that's the only kind of restriction there, but it's not limited in terms of places. And we've had a um, decent number of students for this degree. It's, it's within the top four. And we never had an uh, issue when we would say, well, we don't have available places for you. Um, and offered in the city campus as well, just to highlight, uh, because Box Hill has a, a campus in the city. So just in the CBD and uh, all these most popular courses are delivered in the city. So your Bachelor of Commerce, Hospitality Management, IT, Community Services available in the city because a lot of students work or, or, or live there. Uh, so we offer that uh, to them where, where, where they prefer. Uh, and scrolling, uh, Bachelor of Early Childhood. Uh, Chloe, I... I probably would have to get back to you on this one. I'm not that familiar with, with the timetable for this particular class, weekly yeah. morning, just enjoying evening. I probably, I don't expect we would have evening classes as such. I, in terms of student work rights, that would be just as for any other student visa. So they, of course, are allowed to work and then they would just need to work around the, the schedule. But I imagine for early childhood education would be daytime classes. Uh, and again, it would be, uh, I would probably nominate two, two qualifications that we have that would be the most, uh, uh, let's call academically demanding in terms of content and how intensive they are. And that would be Diploma of Nursing and Bachelor of Early Childhood Education. They are quite packed qualifications. So, so when you enroll in them, it's study, study, study. So I would expect that most of your week daytime would be allocated to study for both nursing and early childhood. So, so, so that evening flexibility, don't, don't think it's there, but I'll, I'll, um, I'll double check and I'll get back to a uh, bot on this one. Yes, that would be good. <clears throat> um, Cause we do get a lot of questions on, on the timetable, uh, depending mm -hmm. on the students. And I, I think it is good to clarify with them if there is some flexibility uh, for whatever reason. Um, 
yeah sure so yeah i can I, I i can check i i, I wouldn't hold my breath but I, but I, I can definitely check I percentage yeah let of, me let me know on whatsapp and i'll get back to chloe on that no problem and we also have a percentage of filipino students currently enrolled i Dave, I would love to see more uh, Filipino students. Yeah. I, we would I think have we can a do handful. More. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we would have a handful. That would uh, I, I would probably just to give you some reassurance about the nationality mix. We have a really nice nationality mix because I realized a lot of schools would be, you know, a really huge chunk or majority from one particular uh, nationality. While for us, say North, Northeast Asia would be uh, maybe twenty five percent. Then South Asia would be another twenty five. Then we would have Southeast Asia of uh, another 15%. And then I have a really nice uh, spread of, uh, you know, a bit of Europe, a bit of Africa. Uh, um, so, so, so it's really, but in terms of Filipino, I, I would say it would probably, yeah, it would be below 10 students at the moment. So happy to see more. Yeah, we can definitely do more from Philippines, Dave. Let's, let's do more. <laughs> Um, yeah, and again, I'm um, just uh, a Bachelor of Digital Media. Uh, we do have Bachelor of Design completion program for Bachelor of Nursing. Uh, if by conversion you mean a, a, a pathway with university? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so we used to package with uh, ACU and uh, Deakin University. So, so typically uh, the two-year diploma will give you one year credit to uh, any major university in Australia. So, so these credits would be, you know, because we are part of Australian qualification framework, we used to work with them quite often. So I'm sure they would recognize it. But the reason we do not package with them anymore, again, during the pandemic or before the pandemic numbers went down and universities require really high level of, uh, or high number of pathway students to keep it viable for them. So that's why it was kind of dropped off, but it would, fit quite nicely with uh, with the um, uh, with the bachelor degree at university um, level uh, digital media I, I would probably have a look at the bachelor of design that has a digital stream to it um, so let me try to see if i can quickly look it up for you Uh, I'll just put it in the chat. So uh, Bachelor of Design has a digital technology stream. Uh, so you could have a look at it in, in terms of that cost structure and, and see if that's what you or your student is after and, and, and decide if that's suitable or not. But that would be the closest kind of match that I could uh, think of. Um, now I'm Bachelor mindful of- Design digital technologies, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so 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 right. and that's that that's pretty cool uh, qualification there. Uh, so could have a look at that. Um, I will. Uh, I'll just put our like a standard um, agent engagement email for you, so you can just sim simply drop us an uh, email on uh, at international at Boxy if you have any inquiries, any ideas about marketing and such and, and so on, but um, happy to communicate through, yes, yes, uh, education. In terms of follow-ups for any current cases, applications that would uh, go through your um, um, standard uh, admissions channel, it's simply the, 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 the fastest, uh, you know, uh, response time. So uh, unless there's really an issue or, or something not going the way you you uh, expected, uh, then I'm kind of happy to be involved. But other than that, my team is really quick with responding and I'll just, just uh, sort it out for you. All right. Are there any more questions or would anyone like to uh, speak out uh, and ask Max a question directly via audio? Happy to do that as well just raise the hand but otherwise i think it's been a really good uh webinar there's been a lot covered um uh, and i think it just demonstrates uh the, the quality and the uh the options available 
uh, at Box Hill. It certainly is really one of the premier institutes uh, in, in Australia that's delivering higher education. It uh, certainly gets really good uh, feedback from all international and local students um, that, that go there. So I, I have no, no doubts uh, about that. Uh, Mina asks locations, please. Uh, are you talking about the campuses, I guess? So yeah, uh, Max mentioned there's one in the CBD in Melbourne. And the oh other yeah, one I, started with the, I started with the, with the CBD and then dropped it off. So thanks for reminding me. Um, CBD, uh, then the main campus in uh, located in Box Hill. So that's, uh, you know, 20 minutes on an express train from, uh, from uh, the CBD. Uh, and we also have a campus in uh, a, a further kind of half an hour out in Lilydale that, that delivers some of this really um, uh, advanced um, science degrees such as biosecurity science. So it's a beautiful campus, but it's more, more, more in the quiet uh, location. But uh, it, uh, Dave, if you're asking about regional, as in uh, for um, uh, in terms of uh, further visa options and stuff like that, it's not regional, regional. So, mm. so uh, yeah. really, they would still uh, qualify uh, us within Melbourne city limits because Melbourne city, you know, almost 100 kilometers radius. So it still yes. covers um, covers that. Um, so it's still within Melbourne city. Uh, and again, your top degrees would be in the city campus. And some of them delivered in Elga. So these are the two main campuses in between the students would be would be moving. So so I wouldn't say like regional, regional in the sense that you probably meant. Okay. Thank you so much for all these questions. It was really exciting to see see, see uh, everyone getting involved. Uh, yeah. there's, there's nothing worse than a session that uh, you know you, you finish talking and, and no one has any questions because <laughs> <laughs> not us at Yes Education, our our team, uh, our network are very good. They're very knowledgeable and they're not afraid to ask questions. Yeah, <laughs> and we're really approachable. You, you, if you really have follow up questions or, or ideas or, or whichever way we can uh, or suggestions how we can improve. Always a uh, open or always happy to have a quick, uh, you know, set up a quick chat and, and happy to, to engage with you and then see how we can um, uh, assist you better. Exactly. All right. So we're at we're at uh, five o'clock Melbourne time. So right on the dot. Um, that's one hour. Exactly. Again, thank you everyone for your active participation today. And uh, yeah, re really uh, thank everyone for giving up their time and uh, especially Max as well. Thanks for, for, for your time today. Hope you enjoyed the session. And hopefully we have some more students from all of our different uh, countries uh, overseas. That would be, should be certainly great to see some more applications come in uh, for even perhaps the July intake coming up within the month. Um, or if not, uh, into, the, into the next year uh, as well, or perhaps even November, should the numbers be good. That's right. Thank you, Bo. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, everyone. See you later. Bye-bye.